What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the OG family. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel only if you want to. But look, my beautiful people, we got these 15 strange creatures recently discovered. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know? I don't know. Look, I, I don't even know why I said you know. Because you know my black ass ain't gonna be out here looking for no new creatures. Like, I was gonna ask y'all, have y'all found, do like, you know anything about any new creatures? Any new things I need to look up? Because what I do in my life, man, I research things and just try to find new information. No matter what it is, man, I just try to find entertainment of like learning different things behind the scenes, bro. Like, behind the comfort of my computer. I'm not going out here looking for no new wildlife in the jungle. Don't ever ask me. I'm not doing it. That's dead. Um, but look, man, let's get into this video right here. And also, man, don't forget to subscribe to my vlog channel. Those videos will be dropping. I've been working on my edits and everything on that channel. That is also my backup channel, just in case something happened in this channel. So y'all can see me over there, just in case, you know. If y'all... If you if if I disappear again, just know I'll be over there on the other channel. You feel me? But look, uh, let's get into this video right here without further ado. Number 15. Ocean sunfish. Ocean sunfish, also known as Mola Mola, are one of the largest bony fish species on earth. That's an awkward looking fully fish. Grown, they can weigh anything between 554 and 2,205 pounds and are on average around six feet long. Their bulk is made up in their width and height though, with some specimens measuring 10 and a half feet tall and eight feet two from fin to fin. They can be found in warmer ocean waters around the world where they hunt their diet of jelly, squid and crustaceans. They can swim across the various levels of the ocean and have been found ranging between the surface and the sea floor. Apart from their unusual look and incredible size, one of the most amazing things about this species is that they produce more eggs than any other vertebrate that we know of and can release as Where's many as 300 million at once. Of course, this reflects the low chances they have of reaching maturity as when they're small, they don't have the same defensive bulk as the adults. Because of their size when fully grown, they have very few natural predators but are commonly targeted by sea lions, killer whales, sharks, and humans. Time for the rare topic. Like, yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Like, bro, I would be, oh, I'll be so pissed off if I was reincarnated, bro, and I came back as that damn fish right there. You can't even protect yourself from nothing. Where's the tail? You're not going nowhere fast, big awkward ass fish. That's terrible. They has 300 million eggs, bro. And they only got a couple of these in the ocean. You know, look, bro. You dead if you one of those, bro. You're not going to survive that shit. We found these images that were recently taken by a research team working in South America. What? And as you can see, they found something quite extraordinary. That's not about real. four feet tall, this creature hasn't yet been given an official name. But it that's looks not like real. something that's come straight out of a fantasy movie. Almost human-like in appearance. It has extremely long hands and feet and ears that appear to be perfectly adapted to hearing sounds across vast distances in the jungle. What do you think it is? And if this is a new species, what would you call it? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag, hashtag rare topic, and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. And now to the next topic. Number 14, Lassiognathus dynema. The deep ocean is a mysterious place that we are only just starting to learn far more about. Rather, it will through a chemical process known as bioluminescence. In this world, which is flooded with darkness because sunlight can't penetrate that far down, the various species have developed ingenious techniques for survival. Food is scarce, and predators have to take every opportunity they can for a meal. And one of the most famous types of adaptations is a bioluminescent lure. One of the more recent species to be discovered that uses one of these is the Lassiognathus dynema. It's a type of... That motherfucker right there is ugly too. That's crazy! That's crazy, bro. Wolf trap anglerfish that dangles a light in front of its Look head it. to attract other fish. Those that fall for the trap swim almost directly into its mouth. And all it needs to do is bite at the right time. I ain't this fish lives in the mouth. northern Gulf of Mexico at depths of between three and five thousand feet. What may surprise you is the difference in size of males and females of all the anglerfish species. The ones we see images of are the females because the males are much, much smaller. So much so that when it's time to mate, they're actually absorbed into the female's body and are used as an extra source of nutrition. What? What? I know, uh, look, man, I know some women out here, yo, you know, it ain't like it used to be for y'all. Y'all you, you, got that wild, that wide mouth down there. Them sugar walls are just, huh, huh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it, you get absorbed? 
Man, that's worse than being a damn prey mantis and you get your head eaten up. Bro, sugar walls consumes you. I'm not going, bro, I came from there. I'm not getting sucked back in there. That's the way I'm going to die. I don't even want to mate. I'm just going to swim away. You know what I'm saying? This chicken monster. I don't need to give my rocks off, ever. skeptical to hear of an animal that's been given a Latin name that literally translates to mean the headless chicken monster. But everything becomes clear once you actually see it. The species was first seen in 2018 during an underwater dive by a rover from a team of Australian researchers who are exploring the ecosystem in the Southern Ocean just off the coast of Antarctica. Amongst various species they'd seen before, this one suddenly appeared and has been identified as a type of deep sea cucumber. It uses its wing-like fins to swim through the water. And in the video, the strange red creature was seen searching the seabed with its tentacles. Species like this feed on small particles like algae and can cover large areas every day in their quest for food. Apart from its appearance, which does indeed look like a chicken without a head, this species has an adaptation that hasn't been seen in a sea cucumber before. While they spend most of their lives at the bottom of the ocean, these ones are actually able to use their fins to swim upwards, which suggests they're also able to harvest food from the water column. Headless chicken monsters have only ever been seen two times, with the other being in the Gulf of Mexico. So it's not quite clear yet quite how widespread they are. It's like a jellyfish. What is this giant bee? While we've known about Wallace's giant bee for a long time, having been named after a researcher called Wallace, who first described them in 1858, they had long been thought to be extinct until a recent discovery. They're the largest known bee species in the world, and the females can grow to be one and a half inches long with an open wingspan of up to two and a half inches. They're black resin bees, which means they don't live in the large communities more commonly associated with honeybees. Instead, they're thought to take over termite nests inside trees and use tree resin to further reinforce the walls for protection. There are only three islands in the world where they are known to have existed, all of which are in Indonesia. Because of their life cycles and the remoteness of where they live, very little is known about their distribution or how many of them there are. But to give an idea of how elusive these giant bees are, there have only been four sightings in the past 40 years. One oh, wow. in 1981, two in 2018, and one in 2019. For the first time, a living female was recorded on video. Number 11, giant squids. For hundreds of years, seafarers have told tales of creepy. huge monsters that That's live crazy. in the open oceans. Just look at ancient maps and you'll see they're decorated with warnings of what may lurk in the depths. But for a long time, people thought they were just the insane rambling tales of people who'd spent too long away from dry land. More recently, however, it's been discovered that there's a phenomenon called deep sea gigantism. That means for some reason, certain species that live at great depths are able to grow to unbelievable sizes. One of these is the giant squid. And while we've known a lot about them for a long time because of carcasses that are washed up on shore, it was only recently that a living specimen has been seen in its natural environment. They have the biggest eyes of any known animal and are thought to be able to grow to up to 43 feet long. Ooh. The tentacles are used to wrap around prey and suffocate it in a similar way to how constrictor snakes do and then pull the food towards their sharp beaks. Japanese researchers managed to capture the first video footage of a giant squid in 2004 and in 2019, the first one in US waters was also recorded. There remains right. debate about how prevalent these creatures truly are throughout the ocean and how many different species there might be but with improving technology we might soon find out number 10 hog-nosed rat these cute animals are called hog-nosed rats and it's only recently in 2015 hold up hold up that's when i gotta stop doing he said cute what you know i just looked online for new pets and stuff man and they do got rats listed people actually have pet rats that's terrifying. The researchers discovered them on the island of Sulawesi in Indonesia. The only place on the island where they're see is on the slopes of Mount Deco, where the rodents forage for earthworms and beetles. To find food in this environment, they've developed specific adaptations. The most obvious is their noses, which help them find the best places to dig, and their front feet are perfect for pulling the earth aside to see what's below. 
unusually for rats, and the sizes particularly long, something that's believed to have developed so they can puncture their prey and pull it from the ground. And for some reason, they have much longer pubic hair than any other known rat. Their jaws, however, aren't as powerful as those of other related species, which is probably because worms and beetle larvae don't require forceful chewing. As a recently discovered species, it's not yet clear how many there are or whether they live on other parts of the island too. Animals that are confined to one specific location are at a much higher risk of rapid population decline due to environmental or human causes. So researchers are trying to determine whether they should be classified as being at risk of extinction. Number nine, Neopalpa Donald Trumpi. As such you know powerful what? and influential people, <laughs> presidents often have streets, schools, and warships named after them. But biologists also like to name newly discovered animals in their honor too, and it's been no different for Donald Trump. Meet the Neopalpa Donald Trump, a species of moth that was discovered in Southern California and Northern Mexico. Get the hell out of here. The thing that makes it stand out from other Neopalpa moths is the yellowish white color of its head scale. That's funny. And this is why it seemed obvious to name it after the president. The scientists who chose. <laughs> Am I the only one to find that shit funny, bro? Because. You know what? It's more funny because it is true. It do look like this dude, man. Like the hair and everything, man. Let me find out. Hey, man, he out here passing genetics to moths and shit. Like, what? Chose the name admitted he had another motive, too. Doing so brought attention to the species and helped <laughs> highlight how important it is to protect fragile habitats around the world. The Neopalpa Donald Trumpi is particularly susceptible to urbanization because of the regions where they're found. And it's possible they won't be around for much longer. The moths are no more than wow. a few inches long, but their antennae extend beyond this and are themselves about two thirds the length of their wings. Both males <laughs> and females look very similar to each That's other, but for funny. some reason, their reproductive organs are much smaller than in other comparable species. Number eight, sea toad. <laughs> Possibly true, you know. <laughs> sea toads are a type of deep sea anglerfish that wow. live in the waters of the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific oceans at depths of around 8,000 feet. They're bizarre looking creatures with large transparent bulbous bodies, short wow. tails, and they're covered in small spiny scales. They're believed to grow to a maximum size of around 12 inches long and have a unique adaptation to their gills that means they can inhale large amounts of water, which results in their body size increasing by almost a third. This is a useful defensive technique because it makes any potential predators think twice about attacking. Like all anglerfish, one of their dorsal fins has a bioluminescent lure that hangs in front of their mouths to attract prey, and their other fins resemble legs. With these, they appear to walk across the seabed, and in some videos seem to stand still on one leg in the silt, almost like a flamingo. With these adaptations to their fins, they aren't very good swimmers, and have been seen using their legs to help traverse the environment and escape from danger. We've still got far more to learn about them, and researchers think they're far more unusual creatures like this still waiting to be found. Number I seven, believe so. Sayofila Sujimoto. Most plant species in the world feed themselves by photosynthesis, where they absorb sunlight and carbon dioxide to convert into energy. That's why they have green leaves, because only green wavelengths of light are useful for this process. There are, however, some species of plants that aren't able to harness the sun's rays, like the recently discovered Sayofila Tsujimoto, which uses an entirely different method altogether. Wow. Found on Ishigaki Island in Japan, where they've developed in isolation from the rest of the world, they are what's known as mycoheterotrophic plants, which means that they've developed a symbiotic relationship with a type of fungus. They share nutrients between each other, with the fungus responsible for extracting the nutrients from the environment, and the Sayafila Sujimoto helping to prevent any other plants from growing nearby that would compete for resources. They also provide the color that attracts animals and insects, which transport the pollen and seeds to different parts the island so new plants and fungi can grow it's the perfect that's a fucking useless plant right there bro like that's useless i'm be real with you like why is you even here bro like this crazy example of two species working like, together in harmony plant without are you? each other it would be much more difficult for them to thrive crazy. number six cave dwelling beetle Caves are some of the best places to explore if you want to find a new species as the dark and dingy environment 
provides plenty of hiding places that previous researchers may have overlooked. One recent discovery was the cave dwelling beetle, whose scientific name is Shudites bellus and is only found in Duan in the Chinese province of Guangxi. It has been described as being the most extremely cave adapted technique ever to have been found and it's perfectly suited to its surroundings. No light enters the cave where they live, so they have no eyes, but they also haven't got any wings or pigmentation. They have thin bodies that are up to a third of an inch long and a twentieth of an inch wide wow. and can be easily identified by their yellowish brown color and the shiny head as they are a species only recently known to science and because it's difficult to observe them in their That's natural environment cold. it's not yet known how they hunt for food or even what they like to eat they're thought to scavenge for micro plant particles in the cave but it's also possible they eat creatures that are smaller than themselves too number five Tardigrades. Tardigrades are one of the most unbelievable known species on Earth. And even though they were first discovered in the 18th century, we're only just learning how special these microscopic animals are. Yeah, I don't think they die either. They grow to a maximum size of 1 50th of an inch long and are plump with four pairs of legs that end with claws or sucking discs. There are around 1,300 different known tardigrade species, but each of them possess similar capabilities. The reason why they're so important to science is that they can adapt and survive to any environment that they're placed in. It doesn't matter how hot or cold they are. They can survive extreme radiation, extreme pressures, and a complete lack of air or food. Just one of these would be enough to kill virtually any other known animal. But tardigrades can form a shell around themselves and re-emerge when things are safe again. Normally wow. they're found in water or on lichens and mosses. And where communities live, they exist in huge numbers. One liter of water can contain as many as 25,000 individuals and they eat exclusively plants or bacteria. Tardigrades have been around for hundreds of millions of years and have survived through all five of the known extinction events that have devastated the planet. It's hoped that by learning more about them, we can find ways to help protect ourselves in extreme environments. With no, what they mean is, look, hold on, let me, let me focus the camera. What they mean is they're going to take this down, whatever they learn about these things, inject into us. So if anything happens, we'll form armor around us or something. We can survive this shit. we just be sitting here, bro. We're going to turn into aliens. I say in the next hundred years, we're going to start to like, like all these immunizations, all these different things we taking that they're making us take. Bro, we are going to be immune to Everything, bro. We're gonna be aliens. You see, the aliens they ain't got no mouths. They just uh, communicate telepathically, bro. We're gonna turn into them. I'm telling you, it's crazy what, what what's going to happen in the future. I think so. That's just my thoughts. Like this shit, crazy. It's crazy. Particular focus on how to stay healthy during long-term space flights. Number four, the Loctodes grete beetle. That's this a rose. The Loctodes grete beetle. That is a damn rose. That was first collected in Kenya during the 1960s. It was all specimens. But was only recently uncovered in a museum's collection and was officially named and recognized in 2019. They're pale yellow and golden color and are no more than three one hundredths of an inch long. They're so tiny that the original collection of them is thought to be the only time they've ever been seen. And it's also why they're so easily lost within the museum's archives. This species has no eyes or wings and can be told apart from other similar beetles because of the telltale pit that can be found on its face where the eyes would normally be. They live in lead litter and soil where they can look for fungus and spores to feed on, something which is made easier by their sensitive antennae. These structures are often said to resemble ponytails, and this is why the beetle was given the name Eloctodes Grete, after Greta Thunberg, the influential teenage environmental campaigner who wears her hair in a similar way. Number three, Loridia colinae spider. There are three species of Loridia spiders, the Loridia anulipes, the Loridia colinae, and the Loridia lucasia. <laughs> All named after the guitarist and lead singer for the Velvet Underground, Lou Reed. Because they're a type of velvet spider that, you guessed it, live underground. Found in Andalusia and the southern coast of Spain, they live in hills and mountainous terrain. And like the velvet spiders that live above ground, they have some unusual characteristics. The first is that they've been found to work in communities and assist each other with rearing the young. Oh, they have damn. an almost unheard of maternal instinct for spiders and literally sacrifice themselves for their young. Unlike wow. many other species of spiders that have even been seen to eat their own hatchlings. 
The mother of this species, however, begins to liquefy their own internal organs to provide food for the spiderlings wow. and continues to do so until she has no more to give. Once this happens, the young will eat the rest of her body too, and only then will they go out into the wider world. Number two. Wow, they they putting on for their population, bro. Like they are making sure that we survive. That's that shit crazy, bro. Survival instincts is crazy. Gecko. I never there are heard hundreds of spider. different types of species of lizards and geckos around the world, but there's one island where they've evolved separately to everywhere else. And is home to countless unique species. Madagascar. Hardly a year goes by without the announcement of, of an incredible new find. And 2019 was a particularly special year with the revelation of a new species of leaf tailed gecko found exclusively in the Ankarana Special Reserve. They look quite similar to other leaf-tailed geckos and have some noticeable differences. Their tails, for example, are quite a bit longer and they have smooth skin on their backs. At first, researchers just thought they'd found an unusual specimen of a different species. But after finding several more, they realized that they'd stumbled across a whole new one. One of the other things that makes them different is the coloration on the insides of their mouths. Other species have mouths that are totally Ooh, that's creepy. But this new one has red patches. Now officially named the Europlatus fetsi, which means sly because of their hiding techniques. Work is now underway to find out how far ranging they are and whether they're facing any threats. Number one. I don't think they are. It's going to be hard to find them joints. You see how good they blend in? That's crazy, bro. Overcock, superb bird. Birds of Paradise are some of the most stunning oh, that's creepy. looking birds in the world. Found across New Guinea and Eastern Australia. That is creepy. There were 41 known species until 2018, when one that was originally Nigga, classified what? as a subspecies was officially elevated to being recognized as a species in its own right. Now known to be distinctly different from the very similar looking superb bird of paradise, these ones are called vocal cop birds of paradise and live in the mountains of the Bird's Neck Peninsula in western New Guinea. Amazingly, I've never they seen have English like that. that's a deep shade of black that they absorb 99% of the light that shines onto them. But as you'll see from these images, this darkness is offset by turquoise blue feathers that play a particularly important role in their mating ritual. Birds of paradise are renowned for their odd dances and courtship routines, and this species is no different. In fact, the way that they hop around is so different from other birds that it's one of the reasons researchers started to realize that they were their own species in the first place. Which of these are you most amazed by? Man, what? I didn't think I was gonna see something like that. That's, that's creepy as hell. If I seen a bird do that shit to me, I'm running. Like, oh, rip, I'm out. Ah! I ain't gonna ask no questions, but don't do that to me. But look, let me know how y'all felt about this video right here, man. Some cool animals out here. Uh, man, I'm not, look, man. I, like I said, I just watched from the comfort of here. I remember one time, man, uh, when me and my brother, we moved from uh, New York to, um, you know, North Carolina. We was walking on the dirt road. This was my father joined the military and stuff. So that's why we came out that way. And uh, we was walking down the dirt road. I'm telling you, two kids straight from New York, bro. Walking down the dirt road, and it was a lizard that came out. It came out on us all fours, boom, like a regular lizard, but it was big like an iguana. It seen us, it stopped, it stood up on its back legs, and it ran on its two back legs into the woods. Blew our minds, boom. Like, oh yeah, that, I knew from there on, bro, I, I want to be an explorer, I know some shit out here in the woods, and I'm just not that type of person, I'm cool, you know? But uh, let me know what's cra anything crazy that y'all have seen. You feel me? Share y'all stories, man. And go ahead and subscribe to my vlog channel. Put your notifications on always when I drop them joints, man. And I'll see you on the next video. Like I always say, spread love because there's too much hate in this world. Love you guys. See you on the next video. And I'm out, though. Blah.